Hello out there to all the Parrot Bebop drone owners. Today is May 20th, 2016, and this is the controller setup that I use to manually pilot my Bebop drone. This is a very good low cost substitute for the Parrot Sky Controller. Um, one of the only main differences between this and the Sky Controller is that while this has very good range, it still does not achieve the flying range or quite the flying range that the Sky Controller will provide. That being said, it is still very, very good. I received several requests from viewers uh, that were inquiring about the various parts that went into making this setup and also setting it up to get it to work with the, the with the Bebop. So that's what this video is going to be about. So here are the various parts that go into this controller setup obviously disassembled and broken down. Uh, now before I get into each part um, I have included a link to each part to ebay.com to where you can purchase these. I found that uh, ebay.com is probably the lowest cost uh, location on the internet to buy these parts. They're readily available. This whole system here uh, I put together for under 40 US dollars so again really low cost and it is very effective okay starting out with the phone uh, this is Samsung Galaxy S3 I actually use a Galaxy S4 in my piloting but I am using my S4 I'm sorry Galaxy S5 to do my piloting but I'm actually using my S5 right now to record this video so to stand in place of that, just to demonstrate it, I am using this older S3 that I have laying around. Um, I will go on to say that I strongly recommend using an Android phone over an iOS phone for a couple of reasons, which I'll get into in a little bit later. Um, obviously, if an Apple iPhone or iOS device is all you have then that can be used but once again I strongly recommend using an Android phone and there are a couple of important reasons for that okay next up I have the main controller itself this is obviously just a standard uh, PlayStation 3 controller this is a USB wired only controller it does not have Bluetooth um, Another controller which I have not tried but I've heard is really good and you know as far as comfort holding it and possibly even better is an Xbox 360 controller. Again, I've not tried one. I happen to like the PS3. This is a generic uh, controller that I bought for I think I bought for about seven dollars and eighty cents on eBay. It's not a genuine Sony one, but this works just fine. It's exactly the same as a Sony. Works just as well. Uh, next up, this is a USB host cable, otherwise known or better known as a USB OTG cable. Um, I strongly recommend a USB wired connection from your controller to your phone or your tablet device, whatever you end up using. A couple different reasons for that. The main reason is latency. Depending on which phone model you use, and the type of Bluetooth connection that you may use if you use a Bluetooth controller you may experience some latency well, which could result in lag between your controller input and what your how your Bebop actually responds so obviously you don't want any lag and the best way to eliminate as much lag as possible or eliminate lag completely is to go with a wired uh, a wired USB controller don't use Bluetooth another reason is Bluetooth works on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and you're also going to want to fly your Bebop on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum especially if you want the maximum range and there could possibly be some interference of some sort 
between the Bluetooth connection if you used one and the Wi-Fi connection from your phone to your Bebop you don't want that uh, that could cause more lag or latency interference whatnot so again to eliminate that I strongly recommend do not use a Bluetooth controller a Bluetooth connection stick with a wired USB now obviously if you're on an iPhone iPad iOS device iOS devices do not support the Bluetooth host, I'm sorry, the USB host function. Once again, iOS does not have USB host. So you can't use an OTG cable like this with an iOS device, obviously. One more reason why I strongly suggest using an Android device. If you only have iOS, then yeah, use the Bluetooth, but bear in mind that, you know, you possibly could have couple minor issues. It could work fine. It could work very well, but there is a possibility of, of those kind of latency issues. Okay, next up, this is a Xiaomi, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, or Xiaomi Mi Wi-Fi extender. And as you can see, it's real small. It's USB. Now, there's a couple of different Xiaomi Mi Wi-Fi extenders available. There's another one on the market that's real popular right now, and a lot of a lot of Bebop pilots are using it. It's basically a Wi-Fi router. It's a little box about this big with two antennas, vertical antennas sticking up out of it. That one I have not tried. I don't know if it's more powerful than this. It looks like a really good item, but it's a little bit more bulky. I mean, it's not out of reason, but it's a little bit bulkier than this. And the main difference with the other model... Um, I might add too that they're both go they both go under the name Xiaomi Mi. This one's called a Xiaomi Mi, and the other model with the two antennas is also called Xiaomi Mi. So by name alone, I don't know if there's a way to differentiate between the two. Uh, as far as product specs and features, the other one is actually a Wi-Fi router, which has a Wi-Fi extender feature or function built into it. This one here is not a router. This is a Wi-Fi extender only. Once again, this is a Wi-Fi extender only, but it's real low cost. I think I paid about 10, 10 US dollars for this. As you can see, it's, it's slim, lightweight, compact. It's got an, a, a pivoting USB uh, plug on it so you can adjust the angle. This thing, I, I really like it a lot. Probably not the most powerful Wi-Fi extender out there, which is, might have a little uh, impact on your range when you're piloting your Bebop. But it's still very good. I've been able to fly with this thing, uh, I think, up to a quarter of a mile or almost one kilometer. So I've been very happy with it. I really like the compact size. Um, again, it's USB, standard USB-A type connector. And it needs a power source, so that's where this comes in. This is just a regular 5200 milliamp hour uh, USB battery. I use this for other things, just not just for you know my controller setup here. But as you can see, the extender plugs right into the battery like that. Um, and of course, then this is a standard USB cable. Type A connector on one end and a mini USB on the other. Uh, not micro, mini. This actually came with the controller and it plugs directly into the back there. Um, and then the Type A side plugs into the OTG cable, which in turn on the other end has micro USB, which plugs into the phone. Again, I can't emphasize enough that I strongly recommend using a wired connection. Now you'll say this this cable is pretty long. Of course, if you can get a shorter uh, USB cable, because it only needs to go like this far out of your controller, that's great. But later on down in this video, I will explain why you might want to stick with a longer cable. Um, it's not a big deal, but there's a feature coming up here shortly that I'll talk to you about, which I think you will need a long longer cable for. Okay, next up we have this, uh, this is basically just a bracket or a, a holder. Um, it clamps right on here to the controller, like so. It snaps securely in place and it's actually 
kind of tight. I'm, I think I need a screwdriver actually to, to get this to snap into place. But once it's in place, I just leave it on there permanently like that. And you have an adjustable bracket for the angle. Um, and these thumb screws will tighten it down to hold the angle that you set. And of course this is spring loaded so you can just, you know, take your your phone. It, it'll hold, this will obviously hold larger phones like the iPhone 6 or the, the Samsung Galaxy Note series, but I don't think it is large enough to hold a tablet, unless your tablet's really small. But I don't have a tablet, I just use my phone, so that way your, your phone just sits there like that. Okay, lastly, got a couple of optional items. You can use these if you want. I chose to use them, you don't have to. This is just uh, some double-sided Velcro tape uh, with adhesive, sticky adhesive backing. What I did is I um, I stuck one side of the Velcro on the back of the battery and the soft side of the Velcro on the back of this. So when this is on the controller, I can just stick the battery there like that. It doesn't go anywhere. And then I can plug my Wi-Fi extender uh, directly into the battery. And everything's nice and adjustable. So I can actually adjust the angle of this to point straight up. And, you know, obviously you're going to want to point this in the direction that your Bebop is flying to get the best possible reception. Um, another thing, optional item again that I have here. I bought a box of these push pin thumbtack type things. And what I did with those, as you'll see here, is, let me see if I get that to focus. I pushed one each directly into the analog control sticks on the controller. Um, and then I took a pencil eraser, cut it, and it was about a centimeter long. I cut it in half with a knife, with a sharp knife, and took some super glue here and just glued each piece of pencil eraser on the top of the thumbtack. Now you don't have to do that. I mean you can pile it just so, but what this does is it gives you much more precise control and of course the little erasers give you a little makes it look a little bit better, a little bit more grip under your thumbs, but you get much more precise control by basically putting these things on, turning them into joysticks instead of just like analog control buttons. The control is, is so much more precise and accurate. I cannot emphasize enough what a difference that makes. So again, this stuff is optional stuff, but something that I would recommend. Another thing that's kind of cool about this bracket that I forgot to add is that when it's not in use, you take your phone off and you can fold this down, unplug the USB cable, and it's nice and compact so you can store it in your bag or wherever you want to put it.